The following video contains profanity and language that some viewers may find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Sister Girl on Films. And we are back with another episode of Thriller Thursday. And so, like I said last week, Thriller Thursday for the next couple of weeks will be us focusing on this juicy, entertaining as hell series on Netflix called Fatal Seduction. Now, I've already recapped and reviewed episodes one to four. So, if you missed that, then go ahead and click the the link above it's going to be below and it's also in the thriller thursday playlist because we're not about to go back on over that we're just going to get into the juiciness that is episodes five to nine so if you finish the series don't give any spoilers please let's go ahead and get into episode five Episode 5 begins with a flashback to Z's birthday party. And so in the middle of the birthday party, Leonard and Nandi hear a knock at the door and it's no other than Brenda. So Brenda comes in all frantic and lets them know that Benjamin Zeba has killed himself in front of his family and she's distraught about it. And so rightfully so, Nandi and Leonard are very concerned. But suspiciously, Leonard tells Nandi to stay in the room, the living room with Z, and he'll go into another room and talk to Brenda. And we're gonna let it go for right now, but something seems suspicious about that. We fast forward to the present, and Nandi is still in shock about what Boyo has revealed about Jacob's identity. And so she's not quite sure how to move. She's kind of feeling really uncomfortable, and she's got a whole lecture to teach and you know Jacob is her student so once class is finished Nandi is like hairing up and getting her stuff together and Jacob tries to stop her and talk to her she's like I, I can't talk right now I, I got a lot going on I just I need some time right now he looks over and he sees that Nandi forgot her briefcase and so he's like oh shit I gotta figure out what's going on which I don't know why he all of a sudden felt like he needed to go through her briefcase but I guess because he's stalking her so I guess it's just like easy access to information that he needs about her and her family, I guess. We head on over to Voyo's bar and Leonard shows up to talk to Voyo because, you know, now he's aware that he's looking into reopening the Jeeva case. And so Leonard is trying to pressure him, you know, to, to not look into the case. That's old news. You know, it, it's, it's done and over with and Voyo just needs to relax and maybe they should go on vacation as a family because the family really misses him. And so Voyo is kind of like suspicious as to why his brother is like really asking him not to look into this case but he's like no just something don't feel right about this case and I need to really get to the bottom of what's going on and so we're back at the school and Laura um, introduces Z to another student who is like a tech mastermind at the school and so Laura's like hey this is I forget I can't remember his name but this is computer engineer student tech guy I don't know and he is able to hack into anybody's system and he can find out who Pokeboy is for you and so Z is like against this she's like no I don't want to do that this seems like it's too much it's like invasive but also so you telling me I can find out who this person is so on one hand she's against it the other hand she's a little intrigued and then so the guy is like well let me just show you what I can do and then so he's explaining to us like if I can't ping his location then that means his phone is off right now so Z is like this is stupid like this is pointless I want to have nothing to do with it and then so as the guy is trying to ping the location he's like yep his phone is off and so Laura's like see now, don't that seem suspicious to you? And so the guy tells Z, you know, well, I have it hooked up to where it'll ping your cell phone once he cuts on his phone. And so you'll know where his location is. And so it looks like Z is closer to finding out that Jacob has is the one that's been DMing her and catfishing her this whole time. So then we're back at Boyo's office and Detective Charlie come in with these damn DVDs. <laughs> A whole stack of DVDs because y'all remember Voyo wanted to look at the surveillance footage from uh, Brenda's cameras at her house. And so Detective Charlie was willing to give it to him. But 
for some reason, they the system is kind of archaic, and allegedly, so he wasn't able to give him a digital version. He had to burn it all to these CDs or DVDs. Um, I'm thinking, who the hell still has a DVD player or a CD drive on their damn computer in the year of our Lord 2023? I mean, I know you can get an external. I got an external one, but I, I halfway can't even figure out how to use it. But Voyo had one on his computer. God bless him. But he had a whole big... <laughs> Where, you get them? Where did you even find them? Amazon. He probably got them from Amazon. Boyo gets to work and gets to looking through this 48 hours worth of footage on these damn uh, CD-ROMs. <laughs> so Jacob is at his auto shop and he's trying to break into Nandi's briefcase, you know, to figure out what's in there. And he cannot for the life of him figure out the code to get into the briefcase. He gets the bright idea. Well, let me text this little ignorant girl. You know, he was like, hey, I'm trying to get a gift for my mom's birthday. It's going to win your mom's birthday, which is kind of random. Hey, y'all, it's editing me. Listen, as I was editing this, I realized you mean to tell me Nandi and Jacob was having all this sex and they declaring they love for each other and he don't even know her damn birthday? Girl, please. But then again, she told him she was a virgin. So Z is just all loose lipped with the information anyway. So he might be on the top. But before he can get a response, child, Z done pinged them and she at the auto shop. And she's like, what's up, Pokey boy? And he's like, excuse me? And she's like, don't play with me. Like, I, I know it's you. And so he played it off enough that she believed that he really wasn't Pokey boy because the boy is good. He's a good manipulator, okay? That boy is good. And so she sits down and talks to him and she's like, I'm so frustrated because I've been chatting with this guy online um, and I don't know who he is. And it said he was here, his phone was here. And Jacob is like, you know, isn't it dangerous to just be talking to a random stranger that, you know, you don't even know that you met online. And she so is like, well, we have a connection and I'm just really into this guy. And so that, that just gave Jacob enough, enough juice to know, oh, okay, this girl is smitten. I can get whatever I need out of her. She didn't fail for this dude that she don't even know this fast. Imagine when she see my fine ass, honey. I'm gonna get with everything I need from her because he's diabolical. Eventually, Z ends up telling Jacob that her birthday is December 20th and that she's a Sagittarius and they get to talking about that. He reveals he's a Virgo. Makes so much sense. <laughs> Shout out to you, Virgos. But also, it makes so much sense. Anyway, as per usual at this point, there's always gonna be a connection to Jacob's father's death. And so when Z says when her birthday is, he has like this distant look on his face and Z's like, what's wrong? He's like, that's the same day my father died. I'm like, you're such a killjoy. Like, every time something going on, that my father died. This is the time my father died. Boy, I know it's traumatic, I know. Especially, it happened in your face. But damn, every time. Anyway, so boom. Now he got the code to get into Nandi's briefcase. And now he knows that Nandi knows who he is, honey. Okay? Shit done just got real. So now we're back at Voyo's office. And he done looked through all these damn CD, DVD, DVD-ROMs, whatever they call now, child. I forget. <laughs> and he sees that Jacob, in fact, went back to Brenda's house. And so he like, boom. Gotcha, bitch. You are the one that killed Brenda. Like, he, no questions asked. He's, he's suspicious. He was like, because look, he already got beef with Jacob. Let's be for real. He already don't like Jacob. Because he effing the woman that he used to love. He is a young stout thing. He didn't call him old. He don't walk with a limp. Like, there's just so much that Voyo don't like about Jacob. And so now he's like, oh, this is the one that killed Brenda. And so I'm watching. I'm like, but no, keep watching. Don't, do not get up. But no, uh, he went ahead and grabbed his gun. He got his little Rafiki stick. <laughs> that thing looked solid, okay? I'm not going to lie. I was like, that's a nice ass walking stick. But it did remind me of the Lion King, okay? And, and, and he's ready for action because the love of his life got killed and he think he got the main suspect. So at the end of the episode, Jacob shows up at Nandi's place like, sir, what are you doing? And so he, he shows up with the briefcase and uh, Leonard is excited to see him, invites him to stay for dinner. And Nandi is shook, okay, because what is her side piece doing at her house with her briefcase? Like, what, what does he know? And so as she's staring at him in disbelief, she gets a phone call from Voyo and Voyo was like, he killed Brenda, he killed Brenda. And then the episode goes off. So y'all, this was a pretty juicy, juicy episode. Let's go ahead and get into episode six. 
So episode six starts with another flashback to 20 years in the past. And we see a mother looks like she's bathing her child. But then once we get closer, we see that she is in fact trying to drown her child. So we can probably guess who that mother is. I'm guessing at the beginning of the episode, I guess that it was probably Jacob's mother, but we don't get clarification and confirmation of that until the end of the episode, but they get us a little teaser at the beginning. Back at Nandi's house and Jacob done cornered her in the kitchen, honey. And so she's a little nervous because she now knows who Jacob is and also suspects that he might've killed Brenda. So he run up on her, she grabbed a knife off the sink. I said, okay, girl, be prepared. If you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready, okay? And so Jacob is like, damn, bitch, you just gonna pull a knife on me? I thought I thought we was in love. We was just having raw naked sex the other day. Now you pulling knives on me. And Nandi is like, what you expect? You rolled up at my anniversary. I don't know nothing about it. now you up in my house. Like, I don't know what's going on. And so Jacob is like, I thought you loved me. What you love him more than me now? Like, you don't want to be with me no more? She's like, Jacob. While they're going back and forth, Leonard is upstairs talking to Z, trying to convince her to come downstairs. He's like, hey, we got a guest for dinner and I want you to meet him. He's about your age. And Z is like, child, what? I ain't trying to meet nobody. Little does she know. It's her little lover boy, but you know, she don't know that yet. Leonard goes back downstairs. He, he walks in on Nandi and Jacob and he kind of side eyeing them, but he ain't really questioning it. Now I would question it a lot more cause they was real close. Like Jacob didn't make no effort to really move away from Nandi. Like he ready to risk it all at this point. And Leonard is like, is y'all cool? So Leonard mentions, well, our daughter Z is going to join us for dinner. And Jacob is like, oh, shit. Well, you know, I'm going to have to go ahead and take a pass because I want to get prepared for our interview tomorrow. So are you OK with me not staying for dinner? And Leonard is like, yeah, that's fine. And so Jacob leaves before Z can come downstairs. Nandi is trying her damnedest to get Jacob out of her family. But little do she know, child, he got his hooks. Okay, and Z. Later that evening, Nandi is in bed with Leonard and she is trying to figure out how the hell she's gonna be able to sneak out this house to go talk to Voyo because Voyo done already told her, don't tell nobody about what information we found out about Jacob. Don't tell nobody about me trying to reopen this Jeeva trial. Just like, I need to keep this on the low, so don't tell nobody. But Leonard is up and horny, honey. He trying to get some of that thing. And so Nandi is like, nah, it's just a lot going on. I'm not feeling it. And so Leonard is mad and he's just like, what was in that briefcase? Because you, you seem real rattled when this young man came in here. And she's just like, oh, it was nothing. It's just a lot to have my student in and just come in. And I was just a little startled. He's like, mm, okay. So Nandi is like, shit, now he mad, child. He ain't gonna go to sleep no time soon. Child, let me give him some of this box so he can go to sleep and I can sneak out and see Boyo. And so <laughs> Leonard and Nandi ended up doing the thing. And at one point, child, she turned around and gave him a little reverse cowgirl. And he was looking like, girl, who taught you this? We ain't never did this. <laughs> but she put that thing on him, honey. And he went right on to sleep, sucking his thumb and everything. He wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't sucking his thumb, but he went to sleep. So she snuck out. And so Voyo ends up showing her the footage of Jacob going back to Brenda's house. Now, my question is, how? I don't, maybe maybe he downloaded the footage, emailed it to himself or something, but I don't remember seeing him do all that. So I'm like, how you got this footage? And it wasn't digital. It was on them damn DVDs, but we gonna let it ride. But nonetheless, he showed the footage to Nandi and Nandi is like, but that don't mean nothing though. Like, what you trying to imply? He was like, you know, I never really thought you were a slut, but I was like, Nandi, slap his face just slapped his face. She was like, what you just say to me? I was waiting for the smack to come, but she didn't because I feel like Voyo kind of crazy and he probably would have smacked her back. <laughs> she recognized that she was not in the safe space. Nandi was just like, you know what? You just doing way too much. I need you to not worry about what I've been doing. Yes, I slept with a 24 year old and it was gooder than a mug, okay? And that ain't none of your business. She was like, and don't you tell my husband cause that's my business to tell him. And Boya was like, well, we need to tell Leonard because if, if your family's in jeopardy, then she's like, no, 
I'm gonna tell my husband, you don't tell him nothing. So she leaves and I feel like rightfully so because Voyo took the shit to the extreme. And just because y'all used to mess around back in the day, that don't mean you still gotta keep acting ugly in present. That scene really pissed me off and I really wanted Nandi to backhand his ass, but I feel like she know better. <laughs> the next day at the campus, Z lets Laura know that um, she thought she had found out who Pokey Boy was and then she went to the shop and no one was there. And the guy that she met, Jacob, um, said he wasn't Pokey Boy and he was actually the owner of the shop. And Laura was like, are you sure that wasn't Pokey Boy? And so Laura's like, child, give me your phone. I said, what's the name of the shop? She did what Z should have been undid. She just looked it up on Instagram, said, girls, it's him. And Laura was like, I have seen him on campus, girl. He is a student here. And so Z is just looking like, she's so dumb. Sure. I'm like, girl, Z, you gotta be smarter than this at this point. She has done so many things up until this point. And I'm like, why is this how they wrote this character? Like she is a dingbat. And I don't understand why they wrote this child like this. But nonetheless, she's kind of like, side eyeing and trying to figure out, you know, okay, well, who is this Jacob character for real then? So later on the episode, Nandi and Boyo end up meeting at Brenda's house and they talk about, you know, what are they going to do about Jacob? And so Jacob ends up texting Nandi. It's like, you know, I really, I really want to talk to you. Like, I really need to see you. I really want to tell you who I really am. Like, when can we meet? And Boyo was like, what the hell does that mean? And I'm like, well, what do you think it means, Boyo? It means what it means. He, he wants to tell her who he really is. <laughs> and so Nandi is just like, I'm not sure about this. And Boyo was like, look, we need to end this. And I feel like he's the person who killed Brenda. Your family's in danger. So let me take care of this. You don't have to worry about it. Like, I promise I will handle everything. And after tonight your family will be safe. And so Nandi reluctantly gives Voya her phone. Child, why she do that? So they set a plan in motion to basically kind of set Jacob up. And so when Nandi gets back home, Leonard is sitting on the couch just looking pissed off and annoyed because mind you, after she snuck off to see Voya that other night, when she tried to sneak back into bed, Leonard was up, honey. And so he didn't say nothing about it, but he knew that she had got out the bed and snuck back in the bed. So... He's real suspicious now, and he's thinking that she's messing around with Voyo at this point. He's like questioning her. It was like, I thought that we were trying to start over, and I'm really trying to make it work, but you coming in late, and, and I ain't talked to you, and I just feel like I'm the only one in this family that's really trying to make our family work. What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Sir, what? Oh, uh, okay. We we gonna we gonna get to him in in the next episode, but he got a lot of nerve, okay? Jacob gets a text message from Nandi and he's excited to go see her because y'all know he probably got plans to put that thing on her, honey, because he, he know he the power that that thing hold, okay? And so he gets to the location that Nandi gave him and when he gets there, he gets attacked by Boyo and Boyo's like whooping his ass and then he took, takes him to a tub and he starts like drowning Jacob and it's like, tell Brenda I said hi. I said, y'all didn't... Y'all done killed Jacob. Wait, now, wait a damn minute. Now, I don't know if I'm ready for this plot twist. And then that's when we go back to the first flashback we got in the beginning of the episode where the mother is trying to drown the baby. And yes, as I suspected, that mother is in fact Jacob's mother and she tried to drown him when he was a baby. I said, this lady been dealing with mental stuff his whole entire life. And that was the end of the episode, y'all. So this episode... It was getting pretty good, you know, it was getting good. It was more kind of just building a foundation and, you know, and kind of just sending us on a wild goose chase. But episode seven is when shit just goes left for me. So let's go ahead and get into episode seven, child. Episode seven is entitled, The Truth Shall Break You. But it really should have been entitled The Bald Headed Ashy Ass Audacity. Because Leonard pissed me off this whole episode, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into it, okay? So the episode picks right back up where we left at episode six, and Boyo appears to have drowned and possibly killed Jacob, okay? So he's like carrying his body, putting it in the trunk, and I'm still shook. Because I just can't get over how intense them sex scenes was in episode one to four. I'm like, are we not going to get any more of that? <laughs> I 
mean, brace me for that. Because I was into it. I was loving little sexy Jacob. And if I don't see him for the rest of the show, I don't know how I got to feel about that, okay? But so far, as far as we know, Jacob has been murdered by Boyo. And so while Boyo is dragging Jacob's body to the car, we are kind of getting like this dual shot of Jacob's mother having a mental breakdown. So this poor woman just been going through it for as long as Jacob has been alive. And it seems like maybe there's a good portion of her mental health that he didn't know about. And that really kind of came out once his father, you know, committed suicide. So it'd be interesting to see if Jacob ever finds out, you know, the truth about what happened when he was a baby and how his mother has always been having these psychotic breaks throughout his life. And so Nandi ends up visiting Brenda's grave and then she gets like a spiritual visit <laughs> from Brenda. And I'm like, don't, don't do like P Valley did and jumped a shark with this whole supernatural thing. Like we had a good thing going. I don't need to start seeing ghostly apparitions of Brenda. So maybe it's just gonna be this one episode, but I was side eyeing the hell out of that. But nonetheless, <laughs> Brenda's ghostly apparition tells Nandi, nothing is as it seems. But I'm also thinking, bitch, you were sleeping with her husband. So how, is, how did your ghostly, ghouly ass escape the depths of hell to come up here and give me a, a note from beyond the grave, but fail to mention from beyond the grave? Also, girl, I was sleeping with your husband this whole time, but we're going to go ahead and get to it because they ain't revealed that yet. But we know at this point, after how she acted the ass at that damn dinner party during the anniversary, I think we all knew at that point that something fishy was going on between Brenda and Leonard. Leonard is at his office, y'all, and he has the unmitigated gall honey to ask Amira Amira I don't I hope this isn't inappropriate and please don't go to HR on me but how do you know when your spouse is cheating on you I don't know Leonard you tell us you, you tell us what you was doing when you was creeping and cheating and sneaking on Nandi. You let us know. Because how are you asking these questions like you are innocent? He's really trying to play victim here and I just can't get beyond that. So Nandi tries to call Boyo and it's, it's failed because he's in full on Guantanamo Bay torture mode, okay? He's full on trying to, to get answers out of our boy Jacob because now we see that Jacob is not dead. You know, he just has been a little bit uh, unresponsive because he was on the brink of death, okay? While Nandi is trying to call Boyo, Leonard asks his lurking in the closet and shit over here and stuff. So this is further creating the narrative in his mind that his brother and his wife are having an affair together. So he just can't shake the image out of his mind, honey, up until the point where he eventually even imagines that Boyo and Nandi are screwing on the couch and Boyo's like waving at him. <laughs> Shit just is going crazy. Like he's really losing his mind. He's projecting a whole lot, okay? While Leonard is in the closet having these these thoughts that Nandi might be cheating with Boyo, we get a flashback. Chat <laughs> in these early 2000s, honey, this outfit he had on these. I wish they would have gave us a clearer vision of <laughs> of teen Leonard because he had these little braids he had his little uh baseball I mean basketball jersey oh child it was really giving early 2000s like <laughs> fashions it was so funny but apparently Voyo and Nandi had a little fling going before she met Leonard but then once she met Leonard the sparks flew and then they started dating and now you know they've been together for years so that is kind of like the foundation of where Leonard's paranoia is coming from because of Voyo and Nandi's past so Amira earlier when she was talking to Leonard in the office told him about this book called The Suit Leonard starts reading the book and so later that night at dinner he comes down, he didn't have a little drink in him. And so he kind of confronts Nandi and, and Z is sitting there just, just confused about what's happening. And so he grabs the book, you know, and, and Z sees it. He's like, why are you in my shit? And he's like, hey, Z, why don't you tell your mom what this book is about? She's like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, I pay all this money for your education. Let's see, go ahead and, if it's been worth it. Okay. And so Z basically says that the book, The Suit, is about a man who finds out his wife is cheating. And then he ends up trying to kill his wife because of the betrayal. 
and and Z is like, you know, but I don't think that, you know, any betrayal is is worth murdering somebody. And uh, Leonard is like, so Nandi, what you think about this book? And she's just looking like, okay, how does he know <laughs> what is going on? So she excuses herself and she leaves and he follows her and he, she's just like, I don't know what's happening, but. I'm not okay with this, but you need to stop drinking. So she excuses herself and goes back to dinner. And while they are asleep that night, Nandi, she ends up getting up and meeting Boyo downstairs. And she asks him, you know, where's Jacob? He was like, oh, Jacob's taking a little swim. And so they walk up to the pool area, child, and, and Jacob is face down, floating in the damn pool. And I'm like, oh, I know he did not bring this boy to their damn house. But then, boom, Nandi wakes up, it was a dream. And I'm like, chow, that would have been crazy. And then so we hear a little clicking noise. Nandi looks over, child. Leonard got a damn gun in her face and talking about, you need to confess. And I'm like, this, I, he is crazy. He is really about to kill her. Bitch, it's another damn dream. I said, she had a dream within a dream. I said, is this a dream too? Oh my God, okay, good job, good job TV show. You had me fooled for a second. <laughs> Obviously, Nandi is just dealing with a whole lot of guilt right now about all the, the lies and, and all the things that she's been holding in this whole time. So at this point, Nandi realizes that things might have gotten a little bit too far. So she tries to reach out to Jacob and warn him that he needs to be careful because Voyo is, is gonna get him, but she can't reach him. She don't know where he's at, so she like tries to go to the shop um to go check on him but the shop obviously is closed because he he missed and being tortured he went there to open it and so she's looking for her cell phone god damn it she left her damn cell phone at home girl you've been missing a lot of stuff you left your damn br briefcase at the school now you done left your phone at home leonard picks up the phone and z tries to stop him and because he's going through the phone and z is like dad like that is not okay and he like snatches away from her it's like i am your dad i am not one of your friends you understand me? I was like, Z, sheesh. <laughs> and so Z walks away, you know, upset, rightfully so. Boyo is at the bar and he's texting Nandi. And he's like, hey, I need to talk to you, but make sure Leonard ain't around because I don't want him to know what we're talking about. And so Leonard walks through the door and was like, um, how about you just tell me yourself what you got to talk about? Because he got Nandi's phone. And so he starts accusing Voyo of sleeping with Nandi. He's like, dang, why you can't keep your dick in your pants? You know, that's my wife. Um, and so Leonard pulls a gun on Voyo. So that's how you know they brothers. Because Voyo saw that gun and was like, I'm about to beat your ass. He was not, he did not like try to, tried to defuse nothing. He was just like, what are you talking about? He's like, I know you've been sleeping with Nandi. I know you've been messing my wife and you made me do something I didn't want to do 10 years ago. And I'm just sick of all this. And Voyo, he ain't worried about that gun. He's like, what'd you do 10 years ago? That, laser focus. And so he's like, don't worry about it. You stay away from my wife. Why are you messing my wife? So they start tossing a little bit and Voyo's still talking about, what did you do 10 years ago? <laughs> So Voyo is whooping Leonard's ass and he gets him in the chokehold and Leonard ends up admitting that Brenda lied about her first statement. I forgot to mention, so Voyo had found out that Brenda had made two statements to the police, but the first statement was missing. I forgot to mention that. Then um, Voyo was like, please don't tell me you had something to do with me being shot. And Leonard was like, I can't do that. And so Royal knocks his ass out. And so at this point, Nandi is driving all over trying to find Jacob. And so she's driving down this, this little back road. And so at this point, Voyo done drug Jacob's body out to the middle of the woods. I'm thinking he dead now. I'm like, that didn't, that didn't trick me in the beginning with his death. Now he didn't really kill him because he got him in the body bag. But Jacob arose like the damn walking dead. So he's he's stumbling through the damn woods after being tortured. So he gets to the road. Nandi's not looking. Boom, she hits Jacob with her car. And I'm like, damn, Jacob, you done been through every damn thing. You done been waterboarded. You done been electrocuted. Now you done been hit with a damn car. <laughs> He was going through it. Nandi is like freaking out. She's like, Jacob, oh my God, what are you doing out here? And so he's pissed. He was like, I can't believe you set me up. You know, you had this man come and try to kill me. And Nandi was like, no, I was trying to warn you. I don't want you, I didn't want you to get killed, but I don't know what's going on right now. It's like, I, I was trying to tell you who I was um, so you can understand everything that's been happening. And I love you and I want to be with you. And she was like, no, this is too much. Like. I can't, I don't want to be with you. Like you are crazy. You've been stalking me. You've been stalking my family. And Jacob is like, 
Oh, so you love your husband? Oh, you love him? You think your family's better than me? You think your husband is better than me? Yes. I'm the only person that can love you. And, and so Nandi is like, but what about when we met? Like, did you know who I was? And Jacob was like, yes, I was stalking you and I was taking pictures of you. I wanted to get back at your husband. I intended to kill him because of what he did to my father. And then when I saw that you were a new professor, I decided to go after you. And she's like, well, what about the night we met? And he was like, people do strange things for love. Nigga, you just met her. I guess he's trying to say he kind of fell in love with her before he ended up meeting her, but whatever. So Nandi is like, I, I don't want to be with you. This is too much. Just stay away from me. Stay away from my family. Stay away from my daughter. And <laughs> she was like, you are crazy. And Jacob was like, oh, you think I'm crazy? You think I'm a psychopath? If I can't have you, nobody can have you. You ain't seen crazy yet. I'll show you crazy. Girl. <laughs> and that's when the episode ends. So Jacob has went full on cray cray. Um, I didn't, I actually didn't expect that turn with his character. Like I knew he had a little crazy in him, obviously. Like I, I called that out in part one of recapping the show, but to see him go full, if I can't have you, nobody can. And if you think I'm crazy, you want to see a psychopath, I'm going to show you a psychopath. Yeah. So I'm like, to what ends though? Cause I, up to this point, the only weapon that Jacob has been using is his dick. Okay. But I guess we're going to find out in episode eight how that too can be used as a weapon against people. So let's go ahead and get into episode eight. Episode eight um, is entitled Psychopath. And rightfully so, because everybody in this episode is acting so crazy. And so we we get right back to it with Voyo and Leonard. And so Voyo has Leonard on the floor, all crumpled up. And so Voyo kind of lets Leonard know that he has no feelings for Nandi. That was years ago. The, lo the woman that he loved was Brenda and Brenda has been killed and he needs to get to the bottom of what's happening with her. So Voyo ends up getting Leonard to tell him that none other than Detective Charlie shot him. Y'all, I called it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew that damn Detective Charlie was the one that shot Voyo. He confirmed it, that that was who shot him, and Voyo is pissed. So he pretends like he's gonna shoot his brother, and Leonard's like, uh, uh. And I'm like, where's all that tough guy energy you had when you came into the bar at first, Leonard? Lenny, where is it at? Because now you on the floor looking like a little bitch when just 30 seconds ago, you was ready to, to put some hot lead in your brother. Punk ass. So Voyo and Nandi meet up and he returns her phone to her. And, you know, she's just kind of freaked out. And she's like, you know, did you tell him what's going on? Um, and so he reassures her that he didn't tell Leonard about Jacob. And not only that, but now he's starting to doubt if whether or not Jacob actually killed Brenda. So Voyo ends up pulling up on Detective Charlie and confronts him about shooting him. He's like, I know you the one that shot me. So we gonna qu quit playing these games. You gonna tell me what it is I need to know. So I know for a fact that Brenda made two statements and I know the first statement is missing. So what's up with that? Why did Brenda change her statement? Detective Charlie lets him know um, let's Voyo know that Leonard convinced Brenda to change her statement. And Voyo's like, well, why would he do that? And the detective Charlie was like, because he was fucking her. You ain't know that? And Voyo's face is just like, I know you lying. You was in love with a hoe, okay? She was a home wrecking hoe, okay? And so <laughs> Voyo was like, look, I'm reopening this Jeeva case. Now you work for me. So I'll let you know what I need for you coming up, but you no longer answer to my brother, you answer to me and he leaves. So Voyo is on a mission now cause his whole little world is being turned upside down and it's just, it's just a lot of mess at this point. So we end up getting the flashback to Leonard and Brenda at, at her school that she was at. And this is when we find out how he tried to convince- Damn, y'all see how thick Leonard is though? <laughs> Hey, come on, thick daddy with your cheating ass. Thick, hey, thick. I can't even pass on her. He walk around with all this ass on her. It's her to change her initial statement about 
Benjamin Jeeba and she was not on board with it. She admitted, you know, that she didn't see everything and, and she doesn't want to change her statement because she doesn't want to lie. And so in order to convince her, he starts kissing her and she's like, well, what are you doing? He's like, I'm doing something that we both want. And then, so they start making out. So that's kind of how the whole affair started between Leonard and Brenda. So at this point, Jacob has gone full psycho and has decided that he is going to put 100% of his effort into going after Z to get back at Nandi. So he meets up with Z at, at her school. Uh, he brings her flowers, you know, and is talking to her and, and she, you know, asked if they can go out for like a little coffee date and he agrees. And he's like, well, before we do that, let's get some out the way. And he kisses Z and I'm like, Oh, Z, Z is in trouble. Molly, you in danger girl. She don't, she, she don't have <laughs> none of the mental fortitude it takes to ward off the likes of a Jacob. Okay. Let me tell you something. If you ever have the misfortune <laughs> of coming in contact with a Virgo man, <sighs> prepare, prepare for the fight of your life, honey, because they are very smart. They are very charming, but they can also be very cunning. They will learn you. They will learn everything about you only to possibly use it later on in the relationship to try to ruin you. I'm having a personal moment. <laughs> Oh my gosh, like what is going on? <laughs> Whoever created this character had an encounter with a Virgo man and they know how they do. Z, watch your back girl. Watch your damn back, okay? <laughs> So back at home, Leonard is trying his damnedest to win Nandi back. You know, he holding her hand, baby, I'm so sorry. And I was just so wrong about how I treated you during a miscarriage. And I really want us to try to get our family back. And, and I just really want us to spend time together. And I just want us to just, just all this baby, 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 please. Meanwhile, you've been screwing her best friend for the last nine years. Chill. So Nandi and Leonard go back up to the bedroom, you know, because they're trying to rekindle their love and their marriage. And so while they're kissing and, and all the things, um, Nandi asks Leonard, have you ever cheated on me? <laughs> the girl, what a, what a mood killer. But Leonard is like, what? Why would you ask me that? No, I would never. The lies, there you the go. Lies. There you the lies. And so while they are having the sexuals, he's having flashbacks of cheating on Nandi. Is this man, psychopath? That's the name of the episode, psychopath. And see, we think in psychopath, they're just talking about Jacob. No, Leonard is the real psychopath. Cause you didn't carry on a whole long ass affair, having S and M dominatrix type sex. Sure, he bought that house for her. I'm sure it'll come up later. I'm sure of it. And it will come up later that he bought that damn house for Brenda. We get a flash, another flashback. Sonny, this show love a good flashback. We get another flashback of Leonard and Brenda and he's leaving the house hastily. She's running, trying to stop him from leaving. And he's like, I can't do this no more. And I'm done. He's like, I'm not leaving her for you. And Brenda was like, you have been telling me for nine years that you are going to leave your wife. I said, Brenda, I hope you are in a jacuzzi in the pits of hell, bitch. What do you mean you've been sleeping with your best friend husband for nine, nine years? So Leonard, you know, it's like, well, I'm not leaving her. And so Brenda breaks a glass, like a bottle and like holds it to his torso and is like, um, this ain't over until I say it's over. And Leonard is like, girl, get the hell out of my way. I just, that, like, I knew that those two were sleeping together. Just, it was, it was obvious from the time they showed us that damn anniversary dinner that something was happening. But I'm thinking it was just something that happened in the past. But for nine years? So the next morning, Nandi gets a text from Jacob saying, payback starts now. <laughs> And Nandi's like, what is going on? What are you? Oh my God. So she's freaking out. So we get a shot of Jacob packing up his nice ass car. Okay. And he is about to go full on villain mode with Z. I'm ready to punch Z through the TV. Dummy bitch. You will never know shit. Because regardless of anything, girl, you, you don't know this dude. Like up until this point, he hasn't confirmed that he's Pokeboy, but you do know he's Jacob from the auto shop. 
like you just you just met Jacob from the auto shop. Let's be clear on that. And now you ready to 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 lay it low and spread it wide and give this this man your virginity that you don't even know. Z, what is wrong with you? And so Z leaves her car and her phone because Nandi is trying to call her. Jacob takes the phone. He smashes the phone. He grabs his pocket knife and he goes over and is talking to Z. And I'm like, he really gonna kill this girl? Child, no, he he didn't. He killed something, but not her. <laughs> so they start kissing and he starts trying to rub on her leg and she stops him and she's like, I've never done this before. And Jacob did a, a fantastic job in pretending like he didn't know that she was already a virgin because clearly she already told him that. She don't know she told him that. And he has to remember that he has not admitted to being Pokey Boy. So he's like, well, we're not going to do anything, you know, if you don't want to do it. And then so she basically gives him the green light. And yeah. So Nandi is trying to get a hold of Jacob to try to find out what the hell he mean. Payback starts now. So she goes to, to the auto shop. He's not there. So she goes to the office to leave him a note. And then she sees Z's phone number on his laptop. So she is freaking out. So that's when she tries to call Z and then Jacob ends up breaking the phone. And so Nandi goes to Leonard and is like, look, Z is missing. We need to call the police. Don't ask me no questions. Just trust me. She's not safe right now. We need to call the police. And so Leonard is like, okay, okay, fine. I'll call the police. So they end up calling the police. And so while the police is trying to figure out, you know, where Z could be, Nandi admits she slept with Jacob. <laughs> Uh, y'all and so he just acting indignant like why why would you sleep with him and she's like i know that he's the person that has z and we need to find him because he's dangerous and so leonard's all pissed off and he's like i can't believe you and so now he's like well we need to tell the police so they can know he's like no we're not telling the police nothing i'll handle this i'll handle everything and then so the episode ends with this shot on a blanket in the the little wooded area they were at with blood on the blanket now you know we as an audience we know the blood is probably not from more than likely not from z being stabbed at least not stabbed with a knife <laughs> but that was the end of the episode and y'all just it was a lot like i was ready to punch leonard every time his fat neck face popped on the screen because the audacity again to feign victimhood when you've been having a whole ass decade long affair with your wife's best friend ridiculous and side note the song that was playing at the end of this episode it was a good ass song like i haven't really talked about it a lot but the music in this show is really good too and that last song even though we as an audience are pretty sure that Z is okay, it did leave me a little suspenseful. Like, did he kill that girl? Like, I'm thinking like, obviously this is supposed to be like her blood cause she's a, a virgin or whatever, but maybe he did kill her. I don't know. Cause the song at the end of it had me feeling like maybe he did. I don't know, but we're going to talk about it in episode nine. So episode nine opens with a flashback again child this show love a flashback uh to the little girl that was assaulted and murdered at, at her school before she was killed actually the day that she was probably killed so she's skipping around and she looks at the driver who's fixing working on the the truck or the bus or whatever so they make eye contact he is looking a little suspicious at this little girl and so she kind of smiles and waves at him. she's just skipping along her way and then she stops and it looks like it is the driver that like reaches out for her hands um, and she takes his hand and then the episode, you know, fades to black. I imagine that Boyle's theory is probably correct that it was the minister's driver that killed the little girl, but I'm sure we will find out in later episodes. So while the search party is looking for Z, they do come across the bloody blanket uh, in the park area and Nandi, you know, is freaking out and crying and they are distraught. And so of course that sends Voyo and Leonard into a rage at this point. So Amira, Leonard's assistant goes to the school and she sees Laura and she asks Laura, does she know anything? You know, has Z been talking to anybody? Like, does she know what's going on? And so Laura tells Amira about Jacob, you know, Pokey Boy, and that 
Um, she suspects that's who Pokey Boy has been this whole time, and he owns uh, Tao Auto Shop. And so the police find out about it, and they find out that it's Jacob Tao, just like Nandi said. And so Leonard is like, let's go there now. And Nandi tries to go. And Leonard is like, no, you stay here with Voyo. And so she's pissed off. She's like, I'm not staying here. You know, she said it after Leonard left, okay? Because he about crazy. <laughs> so she tells Voyo, I'm not staying here. You know, you and your brother are not going to control me. I'm going to do what I want to do. I need to be there for my daughter. Um, so I'm going. So Nandi ends up going to the auto shop as well jacob gets his auto shop and it is a mess honey because the police have obviously been there and ransacked and he's like what the hell's going on and so he gets tackled from behind and it's the police and they start beating him up they put him in handcuffs and they're like where is he at um and so Leonard starts punching him in the face and he pulls a gun on him he was like i'm not playing with you where is my daughter what happened to her so as voyo and nandi pull up to the auto shop uh, Nandi looks in the back of Jacob's car and she sees Z laying there. She's like freaking out. She's like screaming her name. She's banging on the window. And then we cut back to Jacob in the shop getting knocked and slapped around. And Z runs in like screaming like, no, leave him alone. Like I was just sleeping in his car. Like, what are y'all doing? And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? But then again, Jacob, Jacob, why did you break this girl's phone, dummy? Like you was in such a rage and so angry you broke her phone. Now you didn't set yourself to get your ass with. But then again, his whole point was to send her family in a frenzy. So I guess this played right into his plan. So Leonard and Nandi ended up snatching Z up and taking her out the shop. And so Voyo gets in uh, Jacob's face and he's like, so you get off on uh, attacking women and, and doing all this stuff to women. Like what is wrong with you? Voyo was like, I should have killed you when I had the chance. Um, he's like, next time you're not going to be able to stand. And Jacob was like, next time I'll be ready for you. I said, like, Ooh, <laughs> okay. And then, uh, Jacob was pretty much like, what would you do if somebody threatened to try, if somebody took everything you love away from you? And that kind of struck a nerve with Voyo and he just kind of looking like, damn, this boy really is out for revenge. Like, I think that all that clicked for him that, okay, he must be telling the truth. Like something is really going on. So back at the house, Leonard and Nandi are going off on Z as they should. She had no damn business going to work with that boy, skipping class to go get some ass. Girl, please. <laughs> And so Leonard grounds Z and Z is like, child, I'm grown. He's like, oh, okay. Well, your grown ass, give me your car keys. Give me all your credit cards. Your phone already broke. I ain't got to ask for that. Take your ass to your room. And so Z is like, y'all are the ones that overreacted. Like I, we were out. It started raining. We didn't want to drive in the rain, which was the safe thing to do. And Nandi was like, what you did was dangerous. It was not okay. And Z was like, well, what if what I did was a good thing? And Nandi is looking and she was like, did you sleep with him? And Z didn't say yes, but she was just like, look, we were safe. Nothing happened. And y'all are making a big deal out of nothing. And I really hope Jacob decides to press charges on y'all. And when he does, I will happily be a witness. I said, damn, girl, not a been to snitching on your family. <laughs> And Leonard was like, yeah, yeah, girl, take your ass upstairs. And so Z was like, I'm going to live with Uncle V. And Leonard was like, girl, bye, go on upstairs. And so she goes upstairs. Now, Boyo um, talks to Nandi. He's like, I know I ain't got no kids, but I feel like y'all y'all going a little bit too hard on her. Um, and Nandi was like, well, you need to mind your own business. Like, don't worry about what's going on up in here. Like, we'll take care of this. Now, y'all, again, I'm only up to episode nine. But this is giving, could, hear me out, could Z be Boyo's daughter? I don't know. In shows and movies, whenever the father is really pushing the point home that I'm your father, I'm your father, I'm your father. And then there's always like a backstory of another person around the time when the child was conceived that the that the spouse or girlfriend was messing with and then that person all of a sudden is always like well I'm really close to this child and I ain't never had no kids usually that's the formula for a reveal that that child belongs to the other man 
that's my prediction for this storyline, but I could be wrong, but it's giving Z is probably Voyo's daughter. We'll see, because there's a lot of twists and turns in this show, so I wouldn't be surprised if that is what ends up happening later. Now, Nandi and Leonard are talking, and Nandi's like, look, I think we need to tell Z what's going on so she can stay away from Jacob. <laughs> and Leonard said, hold on. So you want me to tell my daughter that the guy that she's with not only fucked her mother, but also wants to kill her father because her father prosecuted his father for a murder. And I'm thinking, well, damn, nigga, since you put it like that. <laughs> when you say it like that, I mean, it don't really sound like something we should be telling our daughter. But also, yeah, she needs to know that she is dealing with a nigga with demon dick. Yeah, she needs to know this. <laughs> so Leonard is like, well, I'm not telling her that because what if she gets mad at us, decides to go to the public? Like, what is that gonna do for my reputation? What is that gonna do for my career? And Nandi is like, wow. So you're not even worried about Z and her safety. This is just all about your career. And Leonard is like, and it's about your career too, baby girl. So you ready to risk it all for this boy too? So they are at, at, at odds at this point. And so Voyo goes back to keep watching these damn DVDs, okay? <laughs> Looking at more surveillance, because at this point, he kind of feels like he might be wrong about Jacob. So now he's trying to find evidence to even to disprove his own theory. And baby, he then came across the footage that I've been waiting on, honey. We fucking got him. <laughs> He saw that damn green jacket going to Brenda's house. And I was like, yes, because I'm sick of this damn green jacket. Leonard's at his office and he has an envelope addressed to him on his desk. So he opens it and it is a copy of Brenda's original motherfucking statement saying that she didn't see nothing. And he is shook, honey. So he calls somebody named Precious. I don't remember if we've, we've met a character named Precious yet in this show. I don't remember writing down the name Precious. Y'all let me know in the comments if I missed the Precious or Precious is coming up. But he calls somebody named Precious and he is panicking. He's like, somebody to send me a correspondence and they know what's happening. All this shit is about to blow up in our face. And Precious was like, uh, baby, I speak Zulu. I don't speak no French. Who is this we? What is this we? What is this? What is this? Like, this sound like a you problem. You trying to make a we problem. I ain't got nothing to do with that. You handle this shit. I ain't got nothing to do with it. So he panicking. So he tries to call Detective Charlie. He ain't answering. So he's sweating and shit. Amira comes in. She's like, are you okay? He's like, who left this letter? She's like, a carrier brought it. Like, is everything fine? So he burns up the letter, which I'm like, the person obviously has a copy of it. So you burning that ain't gonna do nothing. So he burns it up. He starts sweating. I'm like, I know you ain't about to have no damn heart attack. All the shit you done did. Oh no, you need to stay good and healthy so your ass can go to jail, honey. What's going on? Y'all are going to jail, period! So Z confronts Laura about snitching. I'm like, girl, okay. And so Laura is like, girl, what is you talking about? She was like, you know, why would you tell my parents about Jacob? And, and Laura's like, look, I'm your friend, but part of being your friend does not include me lying when you could possibly be in trouble or or dead somewhere. So yeah, anytime something like that happens and we're worried about you, I'm have to, I'm telling every time. Z is just pissed off and and Laura's like, you don't even really even know this dude for real. And Z is like, no, you don't know him. And so Jacob comes around the corner, um, and so Laura's just like, I'm out. And so Z and, and Jacob get to talking, and eventually they start making out, and they end up having sex in the classroom. I'm like, Z. <sighs> this little girl is just a lot. Like, how you go from being a virgin to having sex in a public space? Virgo energy. They are dangerous. While they having sex in the classroom, Jacob thinks about Nandi. He getting off at the idea of, of this payback that he has given her. And I'm like, Z. <laughs> First of all, you didn't kiss the lips that didn't ate all up in your mama's where you came from. Now, you and your mama sharing the same penis. <laughs> it's too much. It is too much. So Leonard ass is trying to run about his damn office and Amira's like, are you like, I need you to sit down like you don't look okay. And this food and fell out and had a heart attack. <laughs> 
Man, get your punk ass up. It ain't even wet over here. Ah, uh, that's what the hell you get. So Nandi is at Boyle's office because he wanted to show this footage to her. And baby, Nandi finally sees what I've been wanting her ass to see this whole time. She saw that damn green jacket and then Boyo pettily zoomed in to Leonard's big ass face. And, it's, and it goes to black. This show is just, it just, it's, it's just the gift that keeps on giving. And I am looking forward to these last five episodes, y'all. But let me know your thoughts on episode five to nine only. And as always, y'all, like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all next week for the final five episodes of season one of Fatal Seduction.